best way to bring folks together to give them a real good enemy. This wicked witch. Wicked is finally here. Part one of Wicked. I see what you did, Universal. You didn't tell anybody that this was going to be broken up into parts. Sure, if you follow movie-related news, you probably knew this was going to be broken up into two parts. But the general audience really didn't know that. My mom, I'm sure, didn't know that. So it's a way to kind of get you in, and then you're watching it. Now you're invested in a two-part film where you're going to have to watch the, a sequel, another movie, another portion and dish out your money for everything after the intermission. Right, that's what I was going to say. Right now, we're basically, once the movie comes out and then we have to wait for the next one, you're kind of in that intermission mode. I, I was curious to see how they were going to do that, and I think they did a very uh, very good job. Um, one thing that was kind of a, a thing that uh, worried a little worried me a little bit is when you have such a big star like Ariana Grande coming in to the fold, uh, you're always afraid is her stardom or, you know, her being so popular uh, that uh, it's going to overshadow. I think she nailed it out of the park. I think that, uh, granted, if you know, you know, Ariana Grande and you know her, like, backstory of being part of Nickelodeon times, uh, she does know how to do the very, like, uh, what's Ditsy, the word? Demure, like, yeah. And confident, but at the same time. Uh, very full of herself. Right. And it, it played very well to Galinda. Yeah. I mean, Cat Valentine. If you watch Sam and Cat back in the day with Jeanette McCurdy, uh, there's a lot of elements of Cat there. And I loved it because we did see in probably every episode of Sam and Cat. Uh, and I, I loved that. At the same time, I love that she very much embodied the energy, the mannerisms of Kristen Chenoweth, who is incredible. So the fact that she was Galinda, uh, the good witch, and they were able to translate it in a way that Ariana Grande already knows how to do when it came to her character of Cat Valentine uh, from Sam and Cat. So as I'm watching this movie, I'm like, oh my God, it's just an evolution of Cat. And it's also an amalgamation of Kristen Chenoweth. It's perfect. I loved it. Cynthia Arrivio did a fantastic job as well as Ethabel? Elf, Elphabel. I never know her name. Elphabel. I always want to say Elphabel, but that's just or the you could call Edina her Elfie for short. Elfie, yeah. Uh, she did a fantastic job too. A lot of weight, a lot of emotion when it came to her character. Oh, yeah. uh, and oh, she's so badass. That's the thing is like where we end up at the end of this story is heartbreaking. To see how this story does progress. If you know the story, you don't know the story. There's a lot of heartbreak in there. At the same time, there's a lot of friendship in there. And then there's a lot of anger in there just in terms of conflict. You got to have conflict in the story. Right. And Cynthia is no stranger to when it comes to Broadway plays and Broadway, like being in surrounded in that environment. Right. Um, and you tell, you could tell that she brings that energy to Alphaba when she's playing that character. And I, I think that she she did a oh she did a wonderful job uh playing this like this the strong alphaba uh but also having that um oh, demure side but vulnerability vulnerability side as well but also you know it like there's a balance between for her character and i really really like that but also too the man of the hour jonathan <laughs> bailey coming in and playing uh I don't even know. All their names are so fancy. Yeah, I don't know. All of you who know the music (laughs) know, like, we're newer to the Wicked World. We saw Wicked, uh, the play, when it came to town, like, a few years ago. So, uh, and it was incredible. We listened to the music after that. But, you know, the character names, this is something that you're going to get a lot of people who don't know the story acquainted with. And uh, Jonathan Bailey, I know nothing about. I didn't watch Bridgerton, was it? That oh, he was yes. On? He was I on Bridgerton. Watch, he was I know amazing nothing. in that. I know nothing about <laughs> him. And he was fantastic in this. Uh, for me, it comes down to the dance, the dance numbers and how they pull those off. His specific dance number. I don't know what it was. It reminded me of like Step in Time from Mary Poppins, very Dick Van Dyke. The dude is light on his feet. He's incredibly talented. Uh, and that just goes for everybody. But for some reason, that dance number in itself and how they utilize 
uh, where it all goes down, the scenery, the set, and the extras. Like, I really do hope that they got all the people that were in previous Wicked, you know, performances. Let all of them be the first ones to take a first crack at being in the movie because, like, the talent across the board uh, definitely showed up in part one, and I can't wait to see where it goes in part two. Right. Like, even the background characters, too, you're only as strong as, like, your... I, honestly, I feel like you're only as strong as, like, the surrounding environment yeah. that you're in when you're playing these characters and the, like, the set designs and the set pieces that they used, too. And we know that some of it was, uh, you know, they actually built the sets for that so yeah, it's noticeable it is noticeable and it's great because you can uh that's what you need is that balance you know cg cgi is great when you use it in balance with practical sets and right. practical things the music is great as always you know it follows along the same path as as the as the play sure. so if you've seen the play you know uh the story beats yeah. that are coming yeah and there's there's quite a bit too you know it's 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 wicked it's wizard of oz so anybody who grew up and loved the wizard of oz it's it's an attachment to it and yes there are many iterations of the wizard of oz uh for instance vanessa wash returned to oz for her first time on the channel yeah. you can check out that reaction <laughs> very different right like that very one is different. more in tune with what the books did and then this you know wicked the Broadway show is adapted from a book as well and this is a movie adapted from the Broadway show so it's like you're getting all these variations <laughs> I was going to say it. there's many layers to when it comes to this because this is an adaptation of a play but yeah. the play is an adaptation of the book but right. the book took um, you know influences and in, in some things from the Wizard of Oz right. and the so film. it's just like film book yeah. book film film play movie you know like there's so many avenues that the world of the Wizard of Oz has created. And it is long, and I know people are going to be hesitant because the runtime is, is yes. pretty long. Uh, but at the same time, man, like the song's got to get you there, and the songs do take some time. It adds a lot of time to it. And whereas in a Broadway show, it's quick. It's a very tight production that they're rushing through. It's a speed run of the entire story with songs in between uh, where you know they can leave a lot to interpretation to give you you know an idea of what took place from here to here to here like the the play itself flies through the story this they need to take a little bit more time especially when it comes to growing you know the the friendship between uh Elphaba and Galinda <laughs> uh, and I loved it you know I did enjoy spending more time with them at you know the school and I, I we figured that's what would take place they, they have to breathe let it breathe a little and it does for those though that maybe aren't in the musicals it's gonna drag for you you know when it comes to the slower songs you ain't into that you heard me i like the one where they're doing step in time type stuff but you know when it's the serenading and stuff i'm more like you know it's time for me to relax <laughs> much like when i'm out of play you know but when it comes to the heavy hitters they showed up Song-wise, when it came to the dance numbers, everybody showed up and it was very well done. A lot of fun. I can't wait to see part two, especially for us and many of you who already know where the story's going. Yeah. Uh, so anytime something happened, you're like, ah, I love the <laughs> reference. And yeah. I love the references to not just, you know, the story itself or the Wizard of Oz story, but to the play. There are references to the play if you're paying attention. I'm sure there's a lot more references that completely flew over our heads right. that many of the... One the, the deeper fans will be able to find. Yeah, I was in the boat in the boat before watching the movie of like, oh, why are they doing these in in this in parts, right. uh, part one and a part two? I feel like it lends itself to being a, a shorter movie type thing. Is what I was my mindset going into watching this part one movie. Um, but after coming out of it, I realized like, no, they do need a little bit of that breathing when it comes to a movie because if they, I honestly do believe that they did do it as the one um it would have felt rushed and it would have felt like something was missing or that they were just kind of brushing through the story um and it, it while it lends itself better as a play in that way as a movie i feel like you do need that that time to breathe so 
I'm glad that they did it this way. And I, of course, we'll be there for part two. And I'll take two. Had they done three movies, then you're just milking it, <laughs> Hobbit. But right. I mean, this one, it, it does come down to money as well. The Universal yeah. wants more money. So they're going to break it up into two. But at the same time, you, there's a lot there that they can get into. And so it's going to take a little bit of time for them to uh, tell this story and at least have it be impactful for everybody that's been waiting so long for uh, this wicked story to be told on the big screen. Yeah, this is definitely act one of the play. And then, you know, act two is next year. And if you know where the intermission happens, it same thing happens with the movie. So you already know where it's going to. But, Cut. but it's the execution of it. Right. And uh, Oz the Great and Powerful, that was another good adaptation. I enjoyed that one. <laughs> it has its own <laughs> thing attached okay. to The Wizard of Oz. Uh, Mila Kunis was an interesting choice. And James Franco. Man, a lot of people just Rachel didn't Weiss. stand up. Rachel Weiss was fantastic in that one. But Michelle either, Williams. Was she in that one, too? Yeah, was she's she Glinda? Glinda. She, yeah, she's Glinda. Glinda. But uh, <laughs> what did you think? If you saw it, let us know your thoughts on Wicked, the film down in the comments below if you haven't uh what's your favorite wizard of oz the wizard of oz movie return to oz oz the great and powerful the, whiz. the books the whiz so many different iterations was there a muppet babies version let did us you, know right did you enjoy uh emerald city the show did you I like about that. Never uh, saw when it. they brought the wizard of oz to once upon a time sure. so like yeah, so yeah there's so many things down in the comments <laughs> below you can also like and subscribe and it's a thing on our facebook twitter tumblr instagram discord before we move on there is nothing after the credits yes. there is nothing in the mid credits either nothing. we stayed the whole way uh we got to go to an early screening that they did at amc on yeah. wednesday uh but uh thank you guys so much uh and as always now it's time to say goodbye and this party is over bye, bye.